Battery degradation, a very popular topic among EVs and more specifically new or soon to be owners. I have just surpassed 10,000 miles in my 2024 Model 3 performance and Tesla just recently put out a new software update allowing owners to check their battery health, thus putting a number to the degradation. Now, about a year ago, I performed a battery health test via the service mode in my Legacy 22 Model 3 Performance, which has the same battery as this one. However, I've purposefully changed my daily charging limit to be able to compare. TLDR on that video, I was charging to 50% daily, which is not only the lowest Tesla will allow you to set in terms of their own software, but also where NMC, the type of batteries all Teslas use, excluding LFP cars, like to be around. I've shown this chart before and it still stands. The closer your battery can be to 50% during its lifespan, the better, theoretically, your battery health should hold. Which, as per my testing last year, I found to be true as my degradation was about half of what it was expected to be. If you haven't seen that video, no worries. I'll be talking about the numbers from that video once this car finishes its battery health test, which we should probably go ahead and start as this thing's been sitting at 2% for like the past four hours. So to get us started, just got to head on into the service settings. And actually, if you notice my screen looks a little weird, it's because I finally got my rotating screen mount installed so glad to have it back and just having it back makes me just more upset that this doesn't come standard on the refresh three and why because it's it's such a nice thing to have these will be available over on test stuff soon also don't forget we are still running our legacy sale so if you just took advantage of the insane legacy model y inventory deal straight from tesla or you're picking up a used tesla for a really good price you can get 20 percent off all legacy accessories, that's screen protectors, organizers, floor mats, everything, no code needed. I'll have it all linked down below. Into service, don't pay attention to my PSI. It got really warm today out of nowhere. And I've actually been meaning to swap back to my warp wheels. Battery health down here at the bottom. Your battery is healthy. Your battery's energy retention is within the expected range based on the age and mileage. Now, if we hit battery health test, your vehicle must remain connected to an AC charging station for up to 17 hours to complete the battery health test. Tesla recommends using a Tesla wall connector or mobile connector, third party and pay per use AC charging equipment may cause test failure or produce unexpected results. During this test, your vehicle's battery will discharge to below 10% and recharge to 100%. Climate control systems will be temporarily disabled and most vehicle features will be unavailable. Do not leave occupants unattended. Avoid interacting with your vehicle or the Tesla app during the test. You can cancel the test at any time on the vehicle's touchscreen or the Tesla app. If the test fails or is canceled, your vehicle will attempt to charge to the set limit. Now, before you begin, this is the requirements. Your vehicle is in park. Battery level is 20% or less. So if you're going to run this yourself, just drive your commute for a few days or whatever it takes to get down to below 20%. You see right here, I'm actually at 2%. And if you're curious, that's seven miles, seven miles for me. Vehicle is connected to the internet. No software updates are scheduled. No battery or thermal alerts are active. And then right down here, the two that I don't have checked vehicle is connected to an AC charging station and the AC charging equipment must be able to provide at least five kilowatts of power. So if you're on a normal 110 or a level one charger, you can't do this. You do need some form of level two charging. I don't think there's any level ones that go above like one and a half kilowatts. Getting into the service menu, you used to be able to do the battery health test right here in the like high voltage battery section, but it looks like you cannot do that anymore. Yeah, we're at 2.1%. All right, we are connected, ready to start the test. I'm hoping because we're starting from such a low state of charge that it's not going to take the full 17 hours. The test I ran last year on my old car, I started from, I believe, right under 20%. So the car still had to burn some battery off to then charge up to 100%. And when that happened, the car got super loud, was dumping a ton of heat. My garage became a sauna. If you're going to do this outside and you're starting from just under 20%, people are bound to think if you live in some sort of like public setting or public area that your car is about to explode. So let's go ahead. Let's start test. Oh, so we got a whole new screen. I don't know if you all can hear that. I'm pretty sure you can. It literally sounds like we're about to take off. This is actually a really good test. 
for how well prevents outside noise from entering the cabin because here's me opening my door or I guess rolling down the window. I'm talking, 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 talking. There it is. This car does a good job at keeping the outside noise out. All right, let's let it do its thing. Now, while we wait the almost 20 hours for this car to finish, let's head inside and discuss the only three things that you really need to know when it comes to maintaining good long-term battery health and preventing as much degradation as possible. So first up, like I just discussed, charging habits, which is the only thing that you can really control that will directly affect your battery health. Returning to this chart, the 20 to 50 percent range is where the battery is at the lowest levels of stress. And while, yes, this chart is a storage measurement over the course of, say, five years, sitting for at least eight hours a night while you sleep or it's just not being driven and another eight hours while you're at work, that is considered storage. So the more time your battery sits around that 50 percent percent range, the better. However, the problem with saying to just be around the 50% range is, well, that everyone's commute is different. So a blanket recommendation for preserving as much battery health as possible isn't really possible. I've said this before, but if you are trying to preserve as much battery as you can, but you're not really too sure what to set your daily SOC limit to, well then do the following. Charge to 80% for a week and keep track of your return home SOC. So how much charge you pull into the driveway with. If it's consistently above 20, 25, 30%, drop your limit until you are arriving home around that high 20s to low 30 range. If you want to throw on an extra 10% just for some overhead in case of an emergency or an extra 10% during the winter to account for your car just being less efficient, then I would say that's pretty okay too. And if you're looking at running this test yourself, but you're unsure what a good rate is, like how much degradation should you actually have, it's about five on the low end to 10% on the high end for the first year or 10 to 15,000 miles, followed by 1% if that per year for every year that follows. So a steep drop off in the beginning followed by a slow, steady downward trend. So with knowing that, along with knowing that I was able to get away with having a 50% daily charge limit, why did I stop? Why did I go to 80%? Well, it wasn't just for testing purposes. In fact, the main reason was for convenience. My Model 3 is my daily and pretty much the only car that I drive. And I think we've all been in a situation where you randomly, somewhat unplanned, do just triple your daily commute miles in one day, if not just one trip. Whether that be a little impromptu trip, an emergency, whatever it might be. And for me, that doesn't happen all the time. In fact, it's pretty rare, but just knowing that I couldn't really do that in my old car charging to 50% without needing to stop at a supercharger, so it was still doable, I would just have to stop and supercharge, it was enough inconvenience for me. In fact, I actually account the fact that I charged to 80% in my new three for being a reason as to why I rarely supercharge anymore. I would genuinely rather take the extra few possible percents of degradation, but know my car is ready to go pretty much anywhere in my state without needing to stop versus having an extra 10, maybe 15 miles to be able to drive with my battery. Also, I have a performance and lower states of charge just mean less performance. This isn't a plaid where they're pretty much fast all the way down to like 10%. And if I was daily charging to 50%, I would kind of just be like never experiencing what I paid for. Number two, extreme temps. Not much to say other than just try to avoid extreme outside temps with either super high or super low states of charge. I assume most people watching this don't live in somewhere like Death Valley where parking in the shade might actually make a meaningful difference, but just be mindful. And number three, supercharging or the type of charger you use daily. Slower is better. If you only supercharge, you can expect more degradation. Whereas if you use a level one or level two home charger, you can expect less degradation. With that being said, as someone that did use a level one charger for like two years, I don't recommend you go out of your way to try and like downgrade your charger, especially if you already have like a level two setup for potentially 
better battery health. For one, of course, it's just really slow and that alone makes it not worth it. But also in the winter, if it gets super cold, it just won't work. Your car has to use energy to keep the battery warm enough to be able to charge. And if it's too cold, it won't be able to recoup the lost energy that it's using to keep the battery warm on a standard 110 outlet. If you were around back in the beginning of 2023 and you were paying attention to the EV space, you'll probably remember that really big cold spell that the US had and all those newer Electrify America chargers stopped working. Well, I remember plugging my car in like throughout that week, like one, one night that week where it got super, super cold. It was like sub zero degrees Fahrenheit. And I was connected to a 110. It was back when I was still charging to 50% daily. And I plugged in at like right at 30%. And before I went to bed five or six hours later, I had noticed that my SOC had actually dropped by like three or 4% and the car just was not able to charge. So if you really do care about long-term degradation and you don't mind the inconvenience, then try to stay as close to 50% as possible, including lowering your SOC if your commute can handle it. Be mindful when you're in extreme temperatures. So if you're in somewhere that's really hot or really cold, don't just leave the car sitting with a super high state of charge or a super low state of charge. And if you are planning on only supercharging as your primary form of charging, then just expect to have worse or more degradation. But yeah, I actually just got the notification that the battery health test is complete. So let's go check it out. So the battery test is now complete. It did not take the full 17 hours. It took about 13 or 14 hours. It finished up a little after noon. You all heard that the car did get really loud. It was dumping heat from where the motors are, but it didn't do that for as long as the last battery health test I did on my old three, this one was already down to 3%, so it only did it for about 30 minutes. From there, I was continuously checking on it via the app because the app will actually give you a timer now. And for most of the time, it was saying that the battery was resting, have no idea what that means. But when it finally did start charging, it was charging extremely slow, like super, super slow. I'm not sure if that's because it was only charging at five kilowatts. I literally could not see any information. It was almost as if the car was in like service mode when you take your car in for service and you try to check it via the app. Nonetheless, though, I have already seen what the results were because it actually notifies you on your phone, gives you a nice little pop up. Uh, and then when you first open the door, it'll tell you the results on the screen down to battery health. And there we go right there with the last tested date. Your battery is healthy. Your battery's energy retention is within the expected range based on its age and mileage. 93% for comparison. Go ahead, show you all. My lifetime is pretty much 11,000 miles. This is more than my previous Model 3, which was tested at almost 20,000 miles and at almost two years. So this is half the miles, about half the miles, and about half the age. Now, of course, this is not a like set in stone, my battery is degrading super quick test, I guess you could say, because I never ran the last test more than once, and I haven't ran this test more than once. So for all I know, this 93 could be wrong, that 94 I had on that one could have been wrong, but assuming Tesla's testing is accurate, then yes, this car has degraded more in a shorter amount of time and shorter mileage. And in fact, this car has been supercharged less and has just like not been in as extreme temperatures as the last car. The last car road trip down to Florida. It was super hot road trip down to Texas for the Cybertruck event. I drove that car everywhere. I've driven this car quite a bit too, but this is mainly just kind of commuting miles, to be honest with you. I My commute has gotten more frequent. This car has also been charged on a level two 32 amp charger its entire life where my old Model 3 for about half of those... I would actually say about eight eight thousand miles. Uh, that car was actually charged on a level one charger. Now, what I actually found to be somewhat interesting, though, is that if we come up here to the top, the estimated mileage that it gives is actually three hundred and three miles. Which, if I'm not mistaken, is what this car's EPA was when I first took delivery. And in fact, this is higher than current EPA states on Tesla's website. Tesla's website right now for the new Model 3 performances state 298 miles. However, I do believe that this 303 is taking into account my wheel configuration because I do have it changed within the settings and it knows it's a smaller wheel. So if we actually calculate 93% for 303 miles, 
that actually gives us about 326 miles, which I would say is pretty in line with what that would kind of be as an estimation for getting a performance and then swapping the 20 inch wheels for more efficient 18 inch wheels. Nonetheless, though, these are my results. Uh, I'll do this test again, actually at the 20,000 mile mark just to have like straight apples to apples comparison, because for all I know, this could be my year one degradation. And then I check in next year or in another 10,000 miles and we're at 92%, right? And then at that point, I'm only 2% off of my previous Model 3 that I was charging to 50%, where this one, I've gotten all the convenience of having a higher daily state of charge and being able to just know that I'm going to make it pretty much anywhere within my state if I need to make impromptu trips, emergency trips, like I discussed. I've seen a lot of people actually running these tests on their own cars. So if you're doing that, let me know You know what your stats are, your, your car, your mileage, what do you charge on, what's your daily charging limit. If you have a 24 Model 3 performance and you're around my odometer, how does your battery health compare to mine? Let me know. If you are new around here and you want to see more test related stuff in your YouTube feed, then feel free to subscribe. I've been sitting at 100% now for like six hours. So I'm going to go out and burn like 10% just, just while I'm not sitting at 100%. I, I don't mind to sit at 90%, uh, but 100% is is where I tend to like, okay, I need to go for a drive and kind of get this burned off. So yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.